Okay, I pulled the brains out. So these are the two big boards uh, in the uh, system. There's an insulator between the two. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at all this stuff. This is pretty cool. There's lots of uh, ribbon cables and there was big wiring harnesses that went to a bunch of stuff. All these white sockets here went to wiring harnesses and stuff. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. So let's take a look at this board here. Let's move, uh, let's move down a bit. There's an ADD DAC here. I think we saw that. Um, Intercell part. So this, this is probably the IO section. Uh, another DAC here. So there's a DAC here, a DAC here. Uh, yeah, I would I would believe this is the interface board to the to the microprocessor. And then uh, this is hinged, which is kind of cool. And then this is the microprocessor board. So there's some PROMs here with the uh, program. And looks like there is some... Um, that's right, I need to get a magnifying glass to read these part numbers here. Looks like a Motorola microprocessor. None of this microcontroller garbage. These are microprocessors. This is a 68488. 6840. Oh, maybe that's the I squared, or the IEEE. Yeah, this is the. Uh, there's a, a IEEE 488 interface on on this uh, machine, and this is the controller chip. This is the 40, 488 controller chip, and uh, looks like we have some. Maybe some RAM here. Here's the ROM. And the micro is a 6802. Yeah, 6802. Here's the crystal. Uh, and demultiplexer. Addressing decoders. Yeah, this looks all familiar stuff. This is my heyday. This is when I was, I was doing a full-time job as an electrical engineer, designing stuff like this. Yeah, very cool. Looks like it's laid out pretty good. All done by hand, you can tell. It's all laid out by hand. Uh, data century memory backup. I'm not familiar with these chips, MC3447. I'm not sure what those are, if those are RAMs or... They're next to the batteries, so they might be RAMs. And, uh... AMI7813. I don't know what that is. Could that be a, uh... Floating point processor? I'm not sure. That one's kind of rubbed off. I can't read that one. It's an Intel part, though. Kind of interesting in a Motorola design. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. So, uh, probably battery backed up RAM, uh, ROM, microprocessor, latch decoding, blah, 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 buffering, and then some type of uh, interface here, and then the other board is just all. It's just all interface as well. So, yeah. Looks like pretty standard stuff. I think we should pull these ROMs out and read them. That'll be cool. See if there's any, any super secrets in there. These are pretty big boards. Uh, let's see, let's measure these boards. These boards are... Boards are 11 inches by, yeah, 11 by 10. Man, back in 1983, 1984, whenever this was designed, these boards were expensive. They're big. Ah, interesting. Well, didn't catch that the first time. Well, if we look down over here, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but these are all crusty. These, see, these are nice and bright over here, and these are all really, really crusty, so the battery's leaked. This data center is just some batteries and, and uh, a chip, and yeah, it's all crusty. 
crusty all the way up into here, so it leaked really bad into this into this area. Interesting. Microprocessor. What years? What years did the micro have on it? 1981. 81. Eighty-one. Eighty-one. All the chips on this board are eighty-one. Eighty-two. So it's at least eighty-two. Eighty-one. 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 Yeah. So around nineteen eighty-two, this thing was built. That's a long time ago. I started my career in 1980, so... Oh, crap. So I don't know if the camera picks this up, but these traces are all green now. These, instead of being nice bright silver, these are all green. And, uh... This battery inside this uh, clock chip or memory backup chip or whatever is data sentry is our batteries and they leaked out and they leaked out on the board into an area about this big. So all of the traces are like cruddy right around this area here. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, well. I think we need to go inside the ROM to see if there's any secrets, super secrets inside the ROM. And, uh, yeah. 1982 at its best. Very nice. Very nice. All right, this is one of the last units, and this is a standalone unit. This is all sealed up. And the only thing that connects it are uh, two coaxes and some data pins. And it is the frequency synthesizer. So this is the master, master clock for everything. Uh, very cool. So let's uh, let's figure out the best way to get in here. I guess just start taking the lid off. Oh man, I stripped it out. Ah. Now I have to figure out what to do with a stripped out screw. Nope. She's a dead. Let me go see what I've got. Okay, so I'm going to try my secret weapon here, which are left hand, left hand uh, drill bits. So let's pick one of an appropriate size. I think that'll bite in there. So yeah, left handed drill bit. So we will get a drill. Don't have left-handed drill bits try to get some all right so this is going counterclockwise and we'll see if we can't drill that out there you go and it picked that oops it picked that screw right out it started to drill it and when it caught shoop, it extracted it so yeah left-handed drill bits can't go can't live without them all right uh, I knew this would be the cruddy side all right, so uh, divider first low synthesizer. So this is a divider, clock divider for the synthesizer. Let's uh, 
open up the other side. Try to be more careful with the screws this time. Should be all right. Let's uh, take the camera down. All right, frequency synthesizer VCO voltage controlled oscillator. So yeah, some RF goodness in here. Uh, there's a star ground here, uh, and. Looks like there's a little bit of a strip line there, a micro strip. Um, so this is in a can, there's some inputs and outputs to this thing. And then this is the loop filter and regulator. Oh, that's pretty cool. This is pretty old school. Yes siree. Pretty old school. You know, now you just get, uh, now you just buy one of these things and, you know, one chip does everything. No need for all of this. Well, that's pretty cool. Look at, look at the, look at the detail they put in here. Everything has a ferrite bead on it. Oops, can you see that? Everything has a ferrite bead on it. Everything has a feed through capacitor. It's all insulated. So fer ferrite bead on the in and the out. Yeah. Very cool, military, military grade, space grade, super secret. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So this coax runs up over to here. And this coax is right there. So this must be the output. Uh, or input, hmm. I would think this would be the output. There's a 33 ohm resistor to the output world. There's a little bit, a little bit of filtering going out, and then the input input is probably a master clock. Yeah, the input is probably the master clock that comes over here to the uh, the digital divide section. Yeah, this is the divider. So the digital clock, something, the time base. So there is still a time base in the unit we haven't taken out yet. Uh, a voltage controlled oscillator, I mean, a oven controlled oscillator. That'll probably feed this with a master, master frequency. And then this does the synthesis of the division and everything. And then it out and it out, outputs here, outputs here. Yep, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, why did this, why was this open? I wonder why they had a hole in it. Is it going to adjust something? Because these things burned out all the time? I don't know. They have a cutout around it. I don't know why they did that. Interesting. When it goes in the unit, it bolts down flat anyway, so this is covered out. But it's interesting that this was left on the outside and everything else is sealed sealed under metal yeah interesting i don't know maybe for test there's one test point here test point two i don't know very strange phase detection in yeah pretty cool all right getting down to the very last parts <laughs> 